Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to show you Lightburn. Lightburn is uh, a laser control software and I'm going to compare it with uh, regular laser control software including the Nige desktop application. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, here we are on my screen and this is the interface of Lightburn. The major differences between uh, the typical softwares, including uh, the Nege desktop application and Lightburn, is the fact that uh, Lightburn combine both the functionality of uh, an editing software as well as a control software. Uh, what I mean by that is that with Lightburn, you can basically perform simple designs using these simple um, shapes over here and also Boolean, which it's active once we have shape in the uh, environment, as well as controlling the machine. So you can send a project directly to your laser cutting and engraving machine. The unicity of the software is its layering system. So Lightburn offers a bunch of different layers that you can see over here with different colors. Um, so you can break down your project into different layers and then you can assign to each individual layer a different uh, settings for your laser cutting and engraving machine. So that would be the speed, the number of passes, the minimum and the maximum power and more. So this will enable you to basically um, send to the machine projects that require both cutting and engraving as well as uh, cutting and engraving of different type and power without having to break down your project to export it into you know uh, multiple parts and then to do the engraving i'm sure that if you're following my channel uh, you you've seen how uh, we are going about this type of projects and depending on the nature of the project, uh, this process might get a little bit tedious. I'll open up one project that I've prepared for this tutorial. This is a bracelet with the bending uh, future over here. So as you can see, we have different colors. Okay, so this was an SVG file, uh, which I've then ungrouped and I've assigned a layer to each part depending on what I wanted the part um, to be. Um, so as you can see over here, I got my first layer, the green one, you can see they are here in order. Uh, I got the mode line. So let me tell you very quickly, mode, when it's line, it means cutting. When it's fill, it means engraving. When it's fill plus line, it means um, engraving and then cutting the outline and then offset fill I think you can understand that. So basically here I have settled for the different parts, different powers. As you can see here, I have a 40% maximum power, then I got a 90% maximum power, and so on and so forth. Now you could bo you could go even crazier than these simple settings over here, like speed, power, and uh, pass count by double clicking on the layer. You saw it opening by accident earlier. And you will basically see here that we have uh, some additional details that we can change. Now, these details will also uh, depend on the machine that you are uh, hooking in. So uh, in our specific case, uh, Nege Master 2S Plus, uh, these are the settings that we can uh, basically change. All right, um, another interesting uh, feature is that you can hook up a camera, a webcam, so that you can, you, you can have a look to your uh, engraving uh, machine. Um, so you can see over here, I will now use this jog tool over here. So the, what, the jog tool, uh, what the jog tool does, it's basically moving the laser head to the point on the screen. So. I will now click and you can see from the camera that the laser moves accordingly. I found that the uh, refresh rate is a little bit too low 
and as you can see the image is actually jerky but I think that for the purpose we can get away with that all right I'll now prepare uh, this project for uh, uh, cutting and engraving and uh, I will then uh, repeat the exact same thing with the Nege desktop application so that I can show you how they compare to one another
I think that the demonstration renders the idea on the differences between Lightburn and BNHM uh, desktop application. Uh, now, clearly, we have a great time difference as the project, the exact same project with an AJ master, uh, with an AJ desktop application took three times as much. Uh, but the problem won't be neither that. I mean, you might be having plenty of time. The problem is that, first of all, you will need to break down your project within Inkscape, if Inkscape is the software that you are using for design, into as many parts as many you need to be uh, cut or engraved with different power settings. Uh, so in our example, I had four different power settings for cutting, cutting through, uh, and um, engraving. And the other thing is uh, the reference point. So you will need to try and to maintain the reference point uh, for all of the parts that you are uh, e exporting uh, through the uh, extension in Inkscape. Uh, but also, uh, the problem remains when you're willing to do uh, in scanning type of engrave. That means engraves that are line by line, okay? Like the name that we did. So in that case, uh, the only way to do it with uh, the NJ desktop application is to load an image. And then you can basically tweak a little bit of the settings uh, to do that. So, and because an image won't have a reference point, uh, that means that you will then need to align yourself looking at it and try to estimate if, you know, the proportion are right. Another problem that you've seen in the video is that every time I'm importing a geometry, a new geometry into uh, the NJ desktop application, I basically need to check in order to uh, give it a size. And as you can see, the size is not exact. Sometimes it takes 0.1 more, sometimes it takes 0.2 less, and you can see that there are discrepancies. So, uh, if your intent is to have something precise, you won't be able to achieve that. While, as, you, as you've seen in Lightburn, I simply imported the SVG file from Inkscape, which had already dimensions, and I didn't have to do absolutely anything about um, dimensioning, as everything was ready. And that's pretty much all. I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you have any comment, leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now!